Welcome back to the Castle Grounds Apiary. Today, we are going to assemble an entire wooden hive body, bottom board, deep, medium, inner cover, and lid, telescopic, uh, no, migratory lid. And we're gonna see uh, how long it takes. There's a lot of videos out there going over how to assemble and, and what to do, tips and tricks, but there's not really a video showing, you know, how long will it realistically take? And in an effort to contribute to our research and analysis on the pros and cons of different hive material, I'm going to go ahead and conduct this project for us. I'm not gonna be in a hurry, but we will time it. It is 5, 10 a.m. And we're just gonna whip this thing together. So I'm not gonna talk a lot. I'm basically gonna fast forward and uh, maybe maybe slow it down a, a couple times to talk about a few things, but we're just gonna jump into it. We're gonna use lots of tight bond. We're going to use our $20 Harbor Freight pneumatic nailer, brad nailer with 18 gauge brads. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So, I use a little uh, souf plastic souffle cup for all my uh, glue up projects, just because it's a lot easier to work out of, at least for me, and they cost next to nothing. So that should be plenty of glue. I'm not gonna do any frames as part of this experiment, and that's because uh, that's a consistent, you know, you're gonna use those on, on whatever type of hive material, hive you use. And I know most people probably think, what would we use besides wood? Well, there's lots, lots of options, and it's been kind of at the forefront of Brandon and I's thoughts as we look to expand the apiary hives at this point once you can split and queen rear the material to build the hives is really the most expensive part of an expansion so if we're going to spend a lot of money on it we want to know that we're getting the best possible product for the best possible price so we've done a lot of concrete hive experiments already or testing now we're gonna do some more wood uh, let's see what size brads am I gonna use I'm gonna use these uh, one and a half inch guys here also Harbor Freight brads which seem to do fine as long as you keep these things oiled, it'll last you. A couple additional tools you're probably going to need a mallet and a speed square to make sure that we are. Oh, I'm getting glue everywhere. Come on. You get liberal with the glue you're probably gonna make a mess and I don't I need this to not take very long because it is morning I do have a work meeting at my full-time job and not very long so kind of counting on this to go quickly and I know I'm being kind of sloppy with the glue, but I'll wipe it up once I get it all nailed. Okay. Well, those went in pretty good. Don't know if I'll need the hammer. We'll go and give her a little love tap anyway, just to make sure she's set. Looks good. Take your speed square, set it in here. Look at that, there's a bee on there. 
B doesn't want to leave. Okay. That's extremely square. Well, that's good. I'm trying to finagle that over as I go. Okay. Easy, dummy. I'll hold that square up there one more time as we see. Things can't easily get out of square if you don't monitor as you go. And once I get this piece in, I'm going to fast forward through this, the uh, last piece and through the... Uh, Ooh. And through the medium. Getting glue everywhere. <laughs> okay. So that's kind of a loosey goosey fit. So we'll go ahead and tack this side in place. Then we will get achieve square, then get this side shoved in place, and then hold it as we drive her home. Alright, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and flip to the front. And put the nails in the face here. All right, so we're about 20 minutes in. And we have the medium box and the deep box done. What takes the longest about those is just the gluing time. The time it takes to put the glue in all those little finger joints or dovetails. Let go, let go. Come on now. Okay. So this is the bottom board. And I have assembled a few different types of bottom boards over the last couple of years. And one thing that I've started to become aware of is that they are not all good. They're not all the same anyway. These are pretty solid. What I don't like about these is the metal, the screen bottom they give you is, uh, I don't know, it's never like the right shape. So I'm gonna spend probably five minutes hand trimming that to be the way I want it to be. Where's my little speech square? There it is. So, same process here, we're gonna do one corner at a time. Like I said, I'm not gonna sit here and talk and tell you why, which piece goes where. There's lots of that information on the tube. And you don't need me to just tell you something you don't need. So one small disclaimer, I could have swore I still had my inner cover for this hive that I needed to make and I can't find the parts for that anywhere so I guess I already put that together so I don't have an inner cover so we're gonna add 
five minutes to, my, to the time. And that's being pretty generous. That's like the simplest, easiest thing to put together. And it takes hardly any time at all. All right, put your speed square in. Make sure you're square, I'm not. Get square. Oh, come on, Cletus. Now my glue's all jammed up. Good night. What is happening? Just there. There. So once your corners are lined up and you're squared, then you put some of them big old brads in there. I haven't fast forwarded you yet because there's a part I'm on, I want to talk about here in just a second. Which side of the star like? Put the knotty side down. Knots are good places for moisture to accumulate. So you want to point those down if you can. Speaking of knots accumulating moisture, I like to put my nail holes further back and not out towards the edge because these will cover with the, with the strips that go over the screen, and those won't accumulate moisture. If you put your nail holes way out here, moisture will get there, fill with water, and this will split earlier than you would probably like. That's just the way with wood, unfortunately. The way with wood. Now the screen. Bees. Where all these bees come from? So you'll notice that this metal screen they give you is a little bit too big. Um, so what I do is I line up two of the sides, one side in the back with where I want it. Then I fold up the other side and give myself a little cut line. Then I gotta get my tin snips. Get that all fit and perfect. One trick I want to show you, once you get your excess folded and you make a starter cut, if you hold your tongue just right, sometimes you can tear this on, on along a seam. Oh, that's a little faster. Especially if you have a bunch of these to do. Hey, you just put a hole in my favorite shirt. There we go. I went well, so now we fit east and west. We're just a little long north and south. This hangs out over the landing board quite a bit. I don't like that. So what I do. And if you've noticed on some of these screen bottoms that assemble this way, with the wood pieces that go around the, the outside, is that a lot of times at the entrance it's very wavy. And which means some places are good for beasts to go in, some places are not. Kind of hard to use a uh, entrance reducer. So what I like to do here is get the back where you want it, and then create another fold right to the end of the wood and this is going to do a couple things it's going to give you a clean line where the metal is and it's also going to allow you to hopefully get it nice and flat it gives it some more rigidity so that it's not so you know undulating at the entrance and one way to achieve that is by folding it over and then taking your hammer and just <coughs> Giving her the persuasion. Now we have a nice, straight, professional looking edge. You're giving the bees a nice front porch and then flip that over so the folded side is on bottom. That way they don't get hung up. Oh yeah, that's looking real good. This part is kind of iffy on the glue. 
it doesn't you're not going to get good wood to wood contact so this is probably uh, a not a efficient place to put your glue but because it is wood on wire this might fill any cracks and seams even though the bees would seal that up anyway I'll put a little bit on there just in case there's any monster gaps I don't think this is doing anything why am I doing this just wasting my expensive glue my great grandfather would be so upset never waste the type on three he always said that okay whatever oh no almost spilled it Okay. What in the dickens? That, that rear strip's a little long. We'll sand her down. It's gonna add to the time. Okay. So make sure your screen's where you want it. I like to start with the rear piece, get it lined up and where you want it, and then you can take the side pieces and just back it on up to it. Get a healthy dose of nails in those, I guess. Whoa. That old boy just about shot right through the side of that. You'll also notice that I have covered up my previous nails hole, nail holes with this, which is what we were going for. Well, we're getting long on time. The bottom's done. Next, migratory cover. This old boy is pretty straightforward. Slop the glue in the trough. This is, the glue here is important. And if you don't glue it up good, go ahead and run some silicone or caulking or some sort of sealer on the top because this is a this thing is a trap for moisture which is why you never see one of these tops last more than a few years which is why I'm you know we're even in this point you know wood hives people say you'll hear people say oh we gotta leave wood wood if you paint it Will last you decades. Well, I think it's possible in some cases wood can last decades, but I've never seen a, a bee box that's 20 years old. I'd love for someone to show me one. Okay, these should just slide in. They were kind of tight on a couple of the other ones I did. But, there we go, that's not too bad. Get one side started and then just... We're gonna put a, nail, a couple nails on this side and we're gonna go down to the other end and work our way down. Easy to have blowouts here, so get your nail gun lined up. Okay, that looks good. And when I mean to get your nail gun lined up, if your nail gun is pointed a little cockeyed, when you shoot this through, you'll have your blowouts come out the side. You don't want that. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, kind of. Where are we at on time? Ooh, 5.55, or 5.51. So it's been 41 minutes. We're going to add five minutes for the inner cover that I can't find.
So 45, 46 minutes, but we're not done. The way I did this landing board is, it looks really good. The metal's not all sticking out, looking like crap, it won't obstruct a, a instrument reducer. Nice and flat and clean edge, that's what you want. So last step, you gotta paint it. These things are not ready without paint. So as much as I hate painting, we gotta get after it. Because this is part of the process. Not only does it take time to paint, but it takes time to dry. You could put these out in the field just like this, but uh, you're gonna get, it's gonna look like hell after the first year. And after the second or third year, it's gonna be falling apart. I wanna eat my red. We've got, we've got a little bit of a theme going this year. Green, yellow, red. What does that make you think of? I don't know. I'm just asking you. Okay, don't need this. Any more? Where am I going to paint at? I'm running out of room. You know, I told myself I wasn't going to talk during the painting process because nobody needs me to tell them how to paint. One, I'm a terrible painter. And two, it's pretty self-explanatory. But I did want to mention one or two things real quick. And it is really important that you put a nice thick coat on these corners. One, if your boxes are like ours, they're not gonna fit together perfect. There's gonna be a little bit of gap, and what the glue doesn't fill, the paint will hopefully help to fill, and two coats will, will go a long way as well. This is a, an expensive Valspar exterior paint primer in one. It's pretty good stuff. So we're just gonna do one coat, but I do make sure I get it on really thick in the corners, to help seal it up, but also because these end grains are the most porous point on the entire hive, which means they'll suck up the most paint. So I really give them a good healthy dose right from the get-go because they are the most porous part of the box. That also means that if you don't get them covered well, they will suck up moisture and rainwater very quickly and you'll start to see these swell and crack split within even the first season if you have really wet weather and you have really you know unsealed boxes so just keep that in mind All right, we were not officially done until our brushes were clean-ish. So, at this point, we will stop the clock. We are at 6.22. So that's one hour and 12 minutes. We'll add five minutes for the assembly of the inner cover, five minutes for paint. So that would take us to 6.22, 6.32. So one hour, 22 minutes, start to finish taking no breaks uh, but keep in mind I do have all the tools right here I have done this multiple times so I kind of have a process in place not a lot of guesswork you don't need to like you know read instructions or anything so hour and 20 minutes granted 
as you do multiples of these, your, your time per unit for construction would go down. I would say as you do three, four, five of these, it's going to be take 30% less time off the clock as you do more. But that's the case with everything. So one hour and 20 minutes is what you'll need to put this together if you have everything you need already set up and ready to go. So anyway, like I said, this, this whole experiment is part of a whole other long list of videos and experiments that we're doing to really weigh the pros and cons of wood. No, this video is not sponsored by Coca-Cola. Um, so hopefully that was informative for you. And if you have any questions about the process or why I did anything that I did, just uh, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Thank you.